Digital payments show no sign of slowing down and the need for PCI DSS is as strong as it's ever been. In the US, 67% of retailers now accept some form of contactless payment, up to 40% in 2019. In China, 96% of consumers use mobile payments for their purchases. And the Indian cards payment market is set to grow at an annual rate of nearly 19% over the next four years to reach more than half a trillion dollars by 2026. But all of this growth does come with risk. Data breaches involving payment and card data have become incredibly commonplace in recent years. And this combined with sophisticated cyber attack practices such as malware, phishing and social engineering means that companies have to be on their toes at all times. PCI DSS or Payment Card Industry Data Security Standard is a way to protect a business against these risks. It is compulsory, effective and there are severe penalties and consequences if you are not compliant. So in this video, we'll cover everything you need to know about PCI DSS. You can also skip to the bits that interest you using the chapters below. Spilto helps companies get PCI DSS compliant using compliance automation, reducing the cost and effort needed for PCI DSS by up to 80%. Towards the end of the video, we'll cover how companies just like yours get PCI DSS compliant faster, easier, and more effectively using Sprinter. So, what is PCI DSS? Let's start with the basics. PCI DSS is a set of payment security standards and it was created by PCI SSC, the Payment Card Industry Security Standards Council, which consists of major global financial institutions. Visa, MasterCard, Discover Financial Services, JCB International, American Express. If your business uses or accepts any of these payment platforms, you have to be compliant with PCI DSS, regardless of whether you're doing one or one million transactions. Penalties are not being PCI DSS compliant. On face value, getting PCI DSS compliant may seem tough, but it's nothing compared to the cost of neglecting it. There's four broad penalties that the PCI Council can impose on a non-compliant business. The first is fines. Fines range from between hundreds to thousands of dollars per month and can be levied by payment card banks, acquiring banks or regulatory bodies. Second up is lawsuits. Nobody likes a lawsuit and the payment space is particularly litigious. Non-compliant businesses can be sued by customers, banks, third parties and more. All of which can result in significant legal fees, settlements and payouts. Increased transaction fees is third. Should a payment card brand deem you a high risk business, you can even be charged a higher transaction fee as a way to mitigate this risk. Loss of ability to process payments is last. The final trump card reserved for the worst violators is an outright ban. Payment card brands may revoke a business ability to process payments entirely, often the death knell for the modern business. In the long run though, the loss of business reputation and customer trust leading to churn and revenue is the most painful penalty of all. Individuals and businesses simply do not want to work with companies that suffer data breaches and security incidents. And according to Cybercrime magazine, nearly 60% of small companies go out of business within six months of falling victim to a data breach or cyber attack. So let's discuss how PCI certification works in the real world. In order to comply with PCI, you need to do three basic things. Collect card data securely, store card data securely, and validate that your security controls for number one and number two are in place. But a company that does millions of transactions a year can't just rely on the basics. And a company that does only a handful of transactions shouldn't have to break the bank to be compliant. PCI agrees, and so PCI certification is divided to four levels, based primarily on the volume of payment transactions processed by business. There's levels one, two, three, and four. Level 1 are the big boys. These are businesses that process over 6 million payment card transactions per year. Level 1 merchants have to follow the strictest version of PCI DSS, including undergoing an annual on-site assessment by a PCI DSS qualified security assessor, an annual PCI report on compliance, and an attestation of compliance thereafter. Now, number of payments isn't the sole determinator of what level of merchant you qualify as. For example, you could not process over 6 million transactions a year. But if you were recently hacked or faced a cyber security event, PCI I could assess that you need to follow the stricter level 1 guidelines for extra protection. Level 2 merchants are businesses that process between 1 and 6 million card payment transactions in a year. These merchants aren't asked to hire an external assessor like in level 1, but instead can undergo an annual self-assessment questionnaire, also known as an SAQ, and submit an EOC after. There's eight different kinds of SAQ, and you fill one based on the nature of your transaction. Level 3 merchants process between 20,000 and 1 million transactions. Similar to level 2, these merchants fill out an SAQ and submit an AOC, though the details do differ between level 2 and level 3. Level 4 merchants are businesses that fall under 20,000 transactions a year. These merchants are asked to fill out a single SAQ and submit an AOC. So, how do you get PCI compliant? 
Now that you've understood broadly which level of PCI compliance you need, this is a small matter of getting compliant. For companies looking to get PCI DSS compliant in 2023 and beyond, they'll be asked to follow version 4.0 of PCI DSS instead of the previous version 3.2. Version 4.0 of PCI DSS includes several new requirements such as additional controls for service providers, enhanced password requirements, and more stringent requirements for segmentation and isolation of networks. There are six sections in PCI DSS 4.0. That are further broken down into 12 requirements. Based on these 12 requirements, you'll have to implement over 300 controls, far higher than what SOC 2 and ISO 27001 have. If you want to know more about these 12 requirements and version 4.0 of PCI DSS, we have an entire video breaking them down that you can watch on the top right corner. Now, how to reduce your PCI DSS costs by up to 80%? Doing PCI manually is extremely expensive, both in terms of price and effort. In pure dollar cost alone, PCI certification for a large to medium organization can cost between fifty to two hundred thousand dollars. Whereas for a small to medium organization, that cost could be between five to twenty thousand dollars. And this price doesn't include invisible costs like human labor, product deprioritization, and missed deadlines due to engineering bandwidth loss. Customers that use printer to get PCI DSS compliant save up to eighty percent of their time and effort. And with continuous monitoring, they continue to stay PCI DSS compliant too. Learn how you can get PCI DSS compliant with compliance automation by visiting sprinter.com or by clicking the link in the description below. And as always, if you have any questions, feel free to ask us and we'll get back to you as soon as possible.